Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. And we're, Art and I, are with our favorite Hollywood historian, Manny Pacheco. Manny, welcome to Celebrating well, Act 2 again. Hey, Art, Manny. John, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. You know, uh, Manny, just the other day, I was, uh, now that I've had a whole bunch of vaccinations, I was with my six-year-old granddaughter, and uh, we were going over the numbers of days and months, and there's this uh, thing, 31 days, half October, da, da, so on and so forth. But there's another month I don't mention, which is Oscar month on TCM. And right. that has 31 days. Right. Okay, that's something that I had forgotten, but in the forgotten Hollywood world, this is something that should be like a, a, a feast. Can you, it, can you give us some information on how all that came about and what, what we can expect this year? Well, um, it's, it's, it's been going on for a number of years, actually. TCM is uh, very dedicated to the idea of the Academy Awards and the, uh, the ceremony itself. And in celebration of that, I mean, they've got a treasure trove of films that have been nominated over the years for, for everything from, from best actor to best picture to best adapted screenplay to best score and best costume. And I mean, so many different categories uh, of Academy Awards that they're able to grab a different film um, each day, 12 films in total each day, and, um, and actually play play them uh, all month and, and without breaking a sweat. I mean, they probably could go six months and never play the same movie twice because there's a lot of movies that you would not think uh, might have been nominated for some sort of an Oscar, uh, but they were. In, in many cases, you, you, you think about the, the most popular ones, the, uh, the best pictures like Casablanca or Gone with the Wind. But there are others. I mean, there were some that are only were, were selected because they had the best song. Uh, you think of State Fair and and that wonderful piece, uh, It Might As Well Be Spring. It was the only nomination they got. And uh, so so State Fair would make the list. And so yeah. that's that's how it, how this worked. Manny, they, they organize it differently every year. They got, as you said, a, a huge library of movies and so many Oscar winners that they can do 12 different Oscar winners a day for 31 days. But they organize it differently. How is it organized this year? Well, in the past, they've done it different ways, like you said. Uh, one year, they did it so that one day would be uh, devoted to the cinematographers, and another day it would be devoted to the costume designers. Uh, th this year, they're doing it completely different. They've done it like this before in the past, but this year they're going in alphabetical order from A to Z. So uh, I would imagine when this airs, we should be somewhere around the G's, H's, I's in that, in that area. So I'm looking <laughs> forward to It's a Mad, 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 Mad World coming up soon. But, uh, but uh, they're going to go in alphabetical order until they end on the 31st day. And, of course, the movie from 1969, Z. So they're, they're right. literally going from A to Z. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. I, one of the things I like about their 31 Days of Oscar is that because they have such a deep library, they include what I'll call more modern films, mm -hmm. you know, films from the 50s and 60s, and I don't know if they go into the 70s, but they also include silence, silent movies. Yes. Well, they, they'll only go back to 1927 when the Oscars started, and there weren't that many silence. Uh, Wings, obviously, the very first uh, award-winning picture, and that was a silent. Not often uh, do the silence do make uh, make this this cut, but there are a few, and I think the the, mo the most uh, memorable would be Wings. But there were others. The Crowd, uh, the King Vidor classic, was nominated for an Oscar, and that's a silent. And if you want to get real modern, they might one day play The Artist, which was a silent. And 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 I didn't forget what you had said. Uh, they actually go into probably the 80s and 90s in some cases. Not oh, often. Really? Okay. Yeah, not often. But they will yeah. play movies from uh, certain movies from the 80s and 90s. I'm campaigning for them one day to play quiz show because I think that fits the, uh, the the whole TCM, you know, genre delivery. But but that's a, that's a question for another day. They they will play some of the more, as you say, modern films. But when they go from A to Z, I mean, you're going to see movies that generally don't seem to go together, other than the fact that they begin with the same letter. So let's take a look at let's say. Uh, Monday, April 12th, you, I mentioned at 5.15 Eastern time, they'll play It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, and then they'll follow with It's Always Fair Weather. 
Uh, and then they go into Ivanhoe, which is a 1952 classic, come back with Jezebel, great film with, with Betty Davis. Johnny Belinda, of course, earned uh, Jane Wyman an Academy Award. And then Van Heflin's only Academy Award with uh, Johnny Eager. So they're going to play a bunch yeah. of Johnnies, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's a quick Jay. question for you. The, uh, the, um, is, is one of the criteria that all of the films that they show have to have at least some winning uh, uh, prize in the Academy or, or just a nomination, or do they have some in there that just were skipped over altogether? No, no, no. They can't be skipped over. They've got to have at least a nomination, ah. which gives them a vast library to choose oh, from. Right I mean, outside. an absolutely vast library. If it were just the winners, 31 days would be good, but it might be the same, you know, the same, same ones every year. Every year. Yeah, but but with, with the nominations, they they actually can pick something they hadn't played in four or five years, for example, and and they're, and they're quite comfortable with that. Another thing to consider too: remember that lately the Oscars have been airing sometime at the end of February, uh, maybe early March, but mostly at the end of February. This year, they had to move the thirty-one days of Oscar that would that would play from February first into like let's say March third, uh, something like that. But this year, they're going to go the full 31 days of, uh, of April. Actually, 30 days of April plus the one day in May to, uh, to honor the Oscars, which are going to air, I believe, on April 28th. I, I believe that's true. Let, let's, let's make sure about that. Pretty, wanna... pretty close to that. I don't know the exact date, but I think it's right around then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to end. Yeah, it's going to end. I think the 25th of April. There you go. The 25th of yeah. April. Uh, there you go. I want to make sure I get that right. So, yeah, so, they, well, so now they're playing it a little bit later. And, and actually, the Facebook chatter on that has been pretty funny. I, 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 did I miss the 31 days of Oscar presentation? <laughs> I mean, people were panicking. I, I can't believe it. And, and everybody settles them down, says, no, 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 it's been moved to April. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're a fan of movies, it's a wonderful film festival for a whole month. And it, right from the living room. It's, it's great. Right, and then they're going to follow that up a couple of days later with the TCM Film Festival, usually held in April, but this year it's going to be pushed back to May, and it's going to be virtual again. So, yes, there's a lot of virtual activity. I think um, TCM has pretty much embraced the whole uh, uh, Zoom spirit, and 31 Days of Oscar falls right in that, uh, right in our laps for that. And uh, and they're going to always show some great, great. Uh, you know, the, the predictable films. But when you pull out a, a movie like Johnny Eager, which is just a great film with Robert Taylor, and it really cemented the career of Van Heflin. I mean, that's what you that's what you look for. Though. Each day you look for those little gems. I mean, you can always end up watching Casablanca or, or The Adventures of Robin Hood on any given week on TCM. But when you find a gem like Johnny Eager that doesn't air as often, you're pretty. You're, you're smiling. I mean, after the Thin Man was one of the Thin Mans that actually got nominated. And it'll be showing up uh, on on the 31 Days of Oscar. And there's so many more. I can't even tell you. And, and the good news with TCM, they'll present the movie, and then the, right before the movie starts, you know, as they're doing their openings, like they always do, kind of an opening where the person talks for a little bit, Ben Mankiewicz yeah. something, and then they then they have some sort of a title opening. They will let you know what it got nominated for. And if it won, so they, they will let you know why this film belongs on the 31 days of Oscar. So I kind of like that because, you know, sure. anytime you can learn, uh, it just makes the film that much richer to enjoy. I oh, think. absolutely. It gives you an appreciation for the medium. And as, I, anyway, thank you, TCM, for doing this uh, every year. It's a great if you love movies, this is a great way to spend <laughs> the whole month. You don't have to get off your couch. I mean, we're all used to doing that. <laughs> we're That's good at that. a lot that. of popcorn. <laughs> we're gold medal winners for sitting on the couch after this past year. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think this is a tough ask here. <laughs> we don't need another excuse. No. Yeah. <laughs> But this is a very good excuse. I it mean, is. I mean, the films are just fabulous. They're supposedly the creme of the creme. Although I will say, in the 1930s, maybe sometimes in the 1940s, you get this odd film that you wonder how in the heck did that get nominated for Best Picture? I always hearken back to 1967 when you had these great movies like, you know, uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner in the Heat of the Night, The Graduate, and and uh, uh, um, 
and Bonnie and Clyde. And out, out of the blue, the other Best Picture nominee was Doctor Doolittle. I, mm. I mean, it just something. It just boggles your mind, and then you think, "Wow, how did Doctor Doolittle end up?" Figure, yeah. Well, but but it happens. Annie, this has been that's it. So this has been great. Uh, appreciate uh, your uh, sharing your knowledge with us, and uh, we'll see you if, uh, in March. Uh, pardon me, in April, on TCM. We'll we'll watch together. You'll be at your house. I'll be at my house. Uh, yes, and I'll, you'll have the popcorn. I'll have the caramel. If popcorn. it's April, it's TCM's month of Oscar movies. Just turn on TCM, yes. day or night. There's going to be an, a contender, a winner, or a contender. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.